Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm super excited because we finally get to test out the all new Ryzen 5 6600U APU. So this is one I've been really wanting to get my hands on, and on the channel we've been able to test out the 6800U and even the 6900HS, but when it comes to this 6 core 12 thread APU from AMD, it's been a bit hard to get a hold of, but I finally got a device powered by the 6600U, and actually this is the 6650U, and basically the only difference are the built-in security features. This is kind of the enterprise version of that chip. But we've got the same exact specs here, and I'm really interested to see how this performs, because we will be seeing some handheld gaming PCs powered by the 6600U, and those will be coming in a bit cheaper than the 6800U handhelds that we're going to be seeing by the end of the year. But with this here, we're going to get a nice baseline of the performance that the 6600U can put out. Now before we get started here, this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So what we have here is a Lenovo ThinkPad X13 Gen 3. Obviously, it's powered by the 6000 series APUs. It's still using a track point, otherwise known as a red nub. We do have a glass cover trackpad here. The unit is constructed of plastic. It's recycled plastic. And overall, I've just been a huge fan of this design. One of my favorite laptop designs of all time. I know some people are into it, some people don't like it, but I think it looks really awesome. When it comes to I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got a full-size HDMI port, full-size USB 3.2, a 3.5mm audio jack, we've got USB Type-C 3.2 for charging, and USB 4, so this will work with an external GPU. Over on the right hand side, not much going on here, just some ventilation and another USB 3.2 port. By the way, it does have a backlit keyboard. And when it comes to the specs, we've got that Ryzen 5 6650U. Like I mentioned, this is the same chip as the 6600U, it's just got more security features built into the chip itself. We've got 6 cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 2.9 GHz, and a boost up to 4.5. But the most exciting thing about these new 6000 series APUs are the built-in graphics. So this is based on RDNA 2 and it's known as the 660M. We've got 6 CUs and a clock up to 1900 MHz. For reference, the 6800U has the 680M with 12 CUs and a clock up to 2200 MHz. So when we compare this to the 6800U with 12 CUs and a clock up to 2200 MHz, obviously that's going to come in more powerful, but the price difference was very dramatic. This exact laptop with the 6800U was actually $680 more than the one with the 660U. So price difference is going to be a big factor down the road when it comes to these two APUs. We've got 16GB of LPDDR5 RAM running at 6400MHz, a 512GB M.2 SSD, a 13-inch 1920x1200 IPS display, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box, but we could install Linux. There are drivers for this ThinkPad. And real quick, I wanted to give you a look at the internals. Now with these newer thin and light laptops, Basically, everything's soldered to the board except for the SSD. So we've got an M.2 SSD here. This is user-replaceable, and we've also got another M.2 slot. It looks to be a 42 millimeter slot, so we can add more storage to this, but just like a lot of these laptops, the RAM is soldered to the board, but it's using some really fast RAM here for what we have. 6400 megahertz, and we've got 16 gigabytes of it. If you were to pick one of these up, I would highly recommend getting the 16 gigabyte version over the 8. And before we move any further, I did want to give you a look at some gaming. So there are a few different power profiles that we can use with this. I'm set to balance right now, which is going to set that TDP at about 20 watts. This is at 1080p, no resolution scale, low settings, and we can get well over 60 FPS with it. 
But there is a bit more that we can get out of this, so there's a few different power profiles, and in high performance mode, at least the Lenovo setting, it'll go up to 30 watts, but you can always use a third party app and bring it on up. I'd say 35 watts with the cooler here is good to go, you're not going to hit thermal throttle with it, but I've actually been able to bring this up to 50 watts, but it will throttle very, very quickly. Alright, so yeah, this has definitely been a great performer. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 5 6650U. Six cores, 12 threads. We've got that 16 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6400 megahertz and the built-in 660M graphics. Now usually with these Lenovo laptops from the BIOS, we can actually set the performance, but with this ThinkPad here, it's actually all tied into the power mode in Windows 11. So best power efficiency, it's gonna run at about 11 watts. We can go up to balance. This is gonna be 20 to 24, a little bit of a boost there. And at best performance, it's gonna be at 30 watts. And we can always use a third-party application like APU Tuning Utility to bring this up. And like I mentioned, the cooling system that they have going with this unit here does handle about 35 watts really well. But yeah, I mean, everything's really snappy here, and I definitely expected it to be. We've got that boost up to 4.5 gigahertz, and just using this as an everyday laptop, it is super, super snappy. So just head over to Lenovo's website. Um, smart technology for all. Get some images loaded up here. And even in power efficient mode at 12 watts, browsing the web, checking your email, everything like that, the 6600U is definitely going to handle it. But one of the big reasons I wanted to test this chip out was for gaming on these integrated graphics. Because we will be seeing a bunch of them powered by this and the 6800U, but this one will be coming in cheaper. So the first thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks. And first up, we've got Geekbench 5. Remember, we're at 30 watts in performance mode. We get a single core of 1290, multi 6015. Not bad at all for a six core mobile chip. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, here's 3D Mark Night Raid. We got a total score of 18,757. Fire Strike, 4,691. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,743. So it's not benchmarking as high as the 6800U, and I didn't expect it to. We've got six less CUs on the GPU, but I still think we can get some really good gaming performance out of the way, so let's go ahead and test out some real-world gaming. First up, we've got GTA 5 1080p with a normal high mix. We're getting an average of 74 FPS, and we're only pulling around 27 watts from that APU. I know it's an older one, but I still personally love playing this game, and seeing it run this well on an APU is really awesome. So yeah, I mean, this is definitely playable at 1080p. And locking this at 60, messing around with some of the settings, I'm sure we could go up to high with a lot more. Next up, we've got Fortnite 1080p medium settings, and I'm actually using the DirectX 11 back end. Usually on these APUs, I go with their experimental back end, which I'm guessing is Vulkan. But DirectX 11 does perform really well. We got an average of 72 FPS. Halo Infinite 720p low, I got an average of 52 FPS. You will see it dip below 50. And we're at about 32 watts here. This one really stresses out that CPU. God of War 720p low settings. This did much better than I thought it would. I figured we'd be in the 30s even at 720p, but we got an average of 47 FPS out of this, and we could always turn FSR to ultra performance and get a bit more out of it, but unfortunately we're not going to be running this at a constant 60 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 at 720p with FSR set to performance did really, really well. We're at 60 here. I did see a few dips, but uh, overall, really impressed by the performance on this game. And it really comes down to the drivers and the optimizations from CD Projekt Red. We've got Dirt 5 720p low. If you've ever tried to run this on an APU, you know how hard it can be on the system. But with these new RDNA graphics, it does way better. Unfortunately, we just can't hit 60, but we did get an average of 51 FPS. And the final thing I wanted to show off was a little more Forza Horizon 5 gameplay. So I'm maxing this little APU out. We're close to 45 watts here. I've got it on a laptop cooler. 
720p low, we can get over 120 FPS out of it. And with the same wattage here at 1080 low, we can get right at 100 FPS with this game. So yeah, I mean, bringing the wattage up does help out performance, but with a laptop like this and handhelds that are going to be powered by this, we're not going to be running this at 40 watts. This was an extreme test and I kind of wanted to show it off. But we'll also be seeing some mini PCs powered by this same chip, and I wouldn't mind running this at 45 watts and a little PC plugged into the wall with sufficient cooling. So overall, the 6600U is a great performer. Not as powerful as the 6800U. I mean, obviously, it's a lower skewed APU, but devices powered by this should be coming in a bit cheaper than that 6800U. And I'm actually really thinking about making this my main laptop. Always love the ThinkPad design, and now that we've got Ryzen 6000 in here, it's got plenty of performance, it does stay nice and cool at a lower wattage, and we can take this up when we need to. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to more devices powered by this chip, and I will have a couple more videos. Uh, one thing I definitely want to do is test this at 15 watts. This was really my initial look at the 6600U. I also want to test SteamOS on it, and of course we have to see how this thing handles emulation. So if you're interested in seeing some videos like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this chip, just let me know in the comments below. I'm looking forward to the handhelds and mini PCs, and I'd also like to know what your thoughts are on kind of a price difference between this, as you saw with the performance here, and the 6800U. If there's a price difference of around three to four hundred dollars, would it skew you more towards the 6600U, or would you want to shell out the money to get that extra performance out of the 6800U? Let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.